I've been waiting, I've been waiting for this moment. Yeshua weighs in, in agreement with the Pharisaic school of Hillel. Get on the other side and be like, John, how how close was that to you? <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Grafted. I'm Sam, this is Tom. We're gonna do another reaction video for The Chosen. This time we're gonna check out season two, episode five. We're both elders in a Messianic congregation. I lived in Jerusalem for two years, so I'm really excited. We've been really enjoying this mm -hmm. uh, whole season because we're looking at it from a Messianic perspective. So we want to just comment and react as we see it here live for the first time. Shall we? We shall. Ooh, here we are. Temple. The Temple Mount. Oh, there's a, there's a guy that got healed. I think so. He's really looking down at his legs. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Look at those guards. So those would be the the, the Jewish guards then? Yeah? Yeah, they'd be uh, Levites okay. at the gate. Yes? Okay, gotta pause. This is Atticus, right? This is the secret police guy. One thing I noticed last episode, he was eating in every shot. <laughs> You're right. Always had something in his right. mouth. You're right. Very important to the show, I'm, I'm pretty I'm sure. I'm just now noticing that. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know my name? The word's out. So it's true then. You're on your feet. Are you Roman? Does my accent give me away? That reminds me. I'm glad they didn't do British accents in this. Oh man. We haven't talked about their accents yet. <laughs> I took a I took a class called Jesus and Film and Contemporary Culture in college. And the fact that they're not doing terrible accents makes me so happy. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's still accents, but they actually, I think they're, I don't know this to be true, but mm -hmm. I think they're actually going for like a, I speak Hebrew and now I'm speaking English No, no, accent. no, they are. They are, they are. They sure. really, because I know people who speak Hebrew no, the guy and they that, speak English and they, 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 they kind of sound like The this, guy that plays know? Jesus, his uncle, I think is Middle Eastern and his uncle's wife, his aunt is Egyptian. And so he tried to combine their English accents. But that's not Hebrew. His own. But he's trying to make them like a Middle Eastern <laughs> a accent. A Middle Eastern accent. And then he was doing this years ago. Oh, oh, really? Because he was doing stuff with Dallas years ago. And then... G the Jesus character uh -huh. was? Oh, I didn't know. And that. then Simon came into the picture, who's Israeli. And Simon's Israeli? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't wonder why it sounds right. like that. <laughs> but then he, so he heard his real accent and was like, oh, hey, mine's close. Wow. Yeah. And so they went with that. So they went with that. I think that's why it feels it yeah. feels better to me. I just watched a video on that with somebody. Yeah. So anyway, anywho, anywho, anywho. All right, let's go ahead to the next clip. Ready for the next clip? Let's do the next clip. But before we go there, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you stick around and watch more episodes. And if you got any comments or questions or anything like that, put that in that area down there where you do that. And give us a thumbs up. <laughs> All right, here we go. I was born Roman. Mm. Yes, but I'm just a man. I had to see with my own eyes. You think he's gonna come to faith? I don't know. I believe it was a miracle. Huh. Interesting. I mean, he saw, he I saw the brothers. It was. Oh. <laughs> Life changing. I'm kind of nervous, I'm kind of mm. nervous. But forbidden. You must want to shout from the rooftops. I, I do. Um, do you at least have anyone close to share the good news with? Oh, Jesus. he's Travis trying to get him. Did my brother almost immediately after leaving the pool? Incredible. Mm. Oh man! What did he think? It's safe. Right. Oh, Just sure. Sure. Tell. I'm Roman. He believes the man responsible has to be out the side. Mm. Mm -hmm. See his face, uh, see his face. I'm going. It's like, what's a messiah? <laughs> Remarkable. <laughs> Alright, I gotta say, I don't trust him. Yeah. <laughs> This is a good messiah question here because uh -huh. he's like, a messiah, well what's a messiah? I mean, they're, they're obviously not speaking English uh, in the first century. So right. 
this is where we get the word Christ. Mm -hmm. So the word Christ is the same word as Messiah. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a made up word in Greek, right? Yeah, 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 right. They didn't have a word for, it's actually Mashiach in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And so the Greeks didn't know what a Messiah figure was. Sure. So they made up this word that means to rub oil on mm -hmm. and kind of added a letter and we transliterate it. It's Christos in Greek mm -hmm. and that's where we get Christ. But it's kind of interesting because in English we have two words, right? Right. Like Messiah and we have Christ that actually mean the exact same thing. Yeah. One is just translated from Hebrew and one from Greek. So it's not Jesus' last name. He <laughs> <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it is not his last name. It's the title. He's the king. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. All right. Ready for next clip? Let's do it. Ooh, I'm looking at it before it starts because Cheater. I'm interested. It's fire. Okay, sorry. Fire but bread. Okay, it's the zealot guy. Simon. Yes. Shimon. It's a good color for him. He still had his. What is that? Knife sword on him. I'm I'm nervous. You should probably put out the fire first. <laughs> oh. Okay. Hide a tree. Oh, we decided to climb a tree. You did. I think it's an oak tree this time. Somebody said that the last one was a juniper tree. I, I, I'm trying to identify this one. Does he really think he's in danger? Why does he need to have his knife out? I can out? smell you. So I can smell you. What in the world? Come no closer. How did you know I was following you? The demon that possesses me. Mm. This is a large soup. That won't be easy. If <laughs> you kill me. Do it. Are you a Roman? No. A tax collector, please. A Roman or a tax collector. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. He's just demonized? He's is that de what he's just saying? Just demonized, yeah. <laughs> Not just, but... Your body is temporal. A demon will go on, pass through the waterless places and find someone else. If you're strong enough to have lucid moments, it's safer in you. Like, what? Until you find someone who can <laughs> pause, help you. Pause, pause that, pause that. What are you thinking? <laughs> it's safer in you? He's saying if he killed him, it would go on to find someone else. And he, so he's saying it, 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 if he's strong enough to be lucid, that it's safer in him rather than going on to someone else and having it control them. That, that's, that's what I'm guessing. That's interesting theology. It is. I, I don't... <laughs> You're a strong man of God, Sam. <laughs> but I don't think I want you to be demonized. No, no. To take on demons so no other people don't have to have them. Mm -mm. That doesn't seem right. But it's very kind of him, mm -hmm. or it's like a strange it's, sort of compliment. This is an interesting interaction. Interesting. Should we keep going? Let's go. Let's keep going. God bless you. It makes sense why you... He didn't have his knife out. He's cutting it himself. Makes me cut myself. Hmm. Would you believe this isn't the strangest thing that's happened to me in the past week? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's manifesting now. There's smell on you. Something vile. Hmm. I hugged my brother goodbye yesterday, at the end of the feast. He'd been lying in the pool of his own. Is he a... What? Holy person. Wow. Not for a long time. Not talking about his brother. It has a bad feeling about you. Thank you. He definitely has this calm when he's talking to the demon. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and you can, this is what happens actually. I've encountered some demonic encounters and right. 
It's not the person, and you can actually tell right. when they're looking at you. Right. And they're trying to intimidate you, which is also what demons try to do. So that was very... <laughs> Did you see, I, so what I'm picking up on is that the demon is recognizing that he's been with Yeshua. He's not recognizing anything about Simon. Instead, he's recognizing that he's been around mm -hmm. this power, you know, that is holy or whatever mm -hmm. that he's he's talking about. So, it, Simon's not picking up on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he seems really calm. It's almost right. like something, because of his interaction with his brother, because mm -hmm. remember the whole, that thing he had written was, I will know the Messiah mm -hmm. has come when you stand on your two feet. Right. Everyone, he's, that was what he wrote in that letter. Mm -hmm. So I think he's a, he seems like a changed man, right? Yeah. He doesn't kill mm -hmm. Rufus, that uh, magistrate or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's shifted because, I mean, most people, demon would freak him out. Yeah. And he seems pretty calm here once he realizes it's not like a physical threat. He puts mm -hmm. his knife away mm -hmm. and then he's like, all right. But you're right. There's this residual. Yeah. Like holy spirit right. on him or, or right. yeshua on him you know yep yep let's keep going see how this scene ends <laughs> he said after the feast we could find him near the jordan outside jericho we passed jericho a while ago near is a relative term john's <laughs> never where you expect him to be <laughs> 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 wow really <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> He's never <laughs> I've been I, waiting. I've been I, waiting for this moment. Well, I was so sad when we left John in the last season. Right. And now he's back. Oh, I, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm like torn with John. Why? Why? Like, I mean, they, they present him like an absolute wild man, <laughs> you know? And I get it. He was eating locust and mm -hmm. honey. Mm -hmm. But he's also like he's come, you know, John's most likely coming out of Qumran. Because yeah. he's he's living in the desert. Mm -hmm. He was set apart at birth, or yeah. just after birth. His parents actually yeah. set him apart, it says in Luke. S a super prophetic birthing and coming up to his birth. It was super prophetic. Right. And he leaves Jerusalem mm -hmm. into the desert. Right. Well, that's where we know Qumran was, where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls thousands of years later, right? Yeah. So then all of a sudden he grows up, you don't hear anything about him in the text. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he's eating locust and honey. Yeah, and hanging out in rivers. Yeah. <laughs> I remember talking to a, a Dead Sea Scroll scholar in Israel about John. Mm -hmm. And I was like, was John an Essene? Mm -hmm. Meaning was he one of these guys that are most likely a part of this you know, community at Qumran? And he said, if he wasn't a part of the community at Qumran, it was a community like that. Mm. So he, meaning mm. this was this really, really extreme sect of Judaism. They're more conservative than the Pharisees. Mm. So when you left, you were, they were like, you're a son of darkness now. Wow. It was, they're the only, you know, mm -hmm. the only ones who are the true believers. Mm. So he leaves, I think, probably be eating uh, locust honey because what else was he gonna eat, you know? Right. So maybe he's a wild man. Uh, but I don't know if he's as wild as he gets presented sure. just because he's coming out of the desert. I don't think he was like living there on his own. I think mm. he was with this community. Mm -hmm. And then it says in the Isaiah 40, right? Right. The preparing mm -hmm. a way in the wilderness for, sure. for the Lord, yeah. right? So make straight the path, Yeah. which is really what he was doing and mm -hmm. even that community was doing. I mean, I think it's probably fair to say that he was a pretty radical, pretty radical wow. guy. I mean, so even radical. being in a scene, calling out Herod, like, and then preparing the way of the Messiah, like, those are some really radical things. So I, I, I hear you. I also just really like the character. <laughs> He's fun. He's fun. He's fun. He's super fun. The interaction between him and Nicodemus in the jail mm -hmm. in the last season, I thought was great. I thought it was a lot of fun. They're very, very different. Very different. <laughs> very different. Different holy men. Yep. All right. Want to go to the next one? In the book of Moses, if a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They it's shall Simon be childless. I understand this against the law of Moses, but I'm here for wicked purposes than the breaking of rules. You minimize incest? Of course not. 
What if the laws of Moses will be minimized? All of this will be addressed. I'm not ready to get into the specifics. You appear to be not ready to get into the specifics of a lot of things. <laughs> For instance, stay on topic. The romantic lives of rulers and kings has been and always will be. Boy, this is a lot. <laughs> I mean, this is great. I don't think I ever thought about this before. Like, uh -huh. what would the sitting down on the log conversation uh -huh. Uh -huh. between Yeshua and John the Baptist, right. Yochanan right. the Immerser, like yeah. two radicals? Yeah, Yeshua is a radical. Well, and okay, their, and their family too <laughs> right. which makes it even more elevated. Yeah, they're cousins. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. John's like, are you serious? Are you serious, Come on. bro? Like, it's funny. Can you imagine calling Yeshua and telling him, "Come on, you need to be more uh, anything," you know? Right, right. <laughs> oh man. Peter does that too sometimes. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's a lot. This is. A, I wasn't. I, honestly, when they were sitting down, you see Simon the Zealot peering out. I wasn't expecting to see John and Yeshua talking, mm -hmm. and so that surprised me. Mm -hmm. so, but that was exciting. Of enormous fascination to people. It was covered at length in Torah. I don't see why you feel the need to focus on He's it now. He's a client king or tetrarch or whatever. He's one of us. He's unlawful. I am not afraid of him. He may not be wow. as bad as his father, but he is still bad. That's really interesting, actually. Mm -hmm. So what John's saying is he's Jewish, mm -hmm. or he's acting in this Jewish role. He's mm -hmm. he's. It's a complicated who. who you're you're talking to Herod. Okay, yeah, talking about Herod. About Herod at the mm -hmm. time, but. And he's, then he's referring Herod the Great, who's even more evil. Mm -hmm. But his point is he's Jewish. And since he's Jewish, we, we can't allow this uh, because he's, oh, you know, the the overseer of Judea and of all of Israel, really, at yeah. this time. Yeah, so he's he's hung up, and for good reason. Mm -hmm. um, and he calls him out, like you said. He does. It, it costs him everything, but right. he calls him out. Yeah. It's a, I think Josephus says that it was safer to be a pig. No. In the house of Herod, than to be a it's safer to be a rel no, what is it? No, it's a pig. It's safer to be a pig in the household of Herod than to be a relative, because he killed his wow. wife and he killed his sons and like he killed all these people, but he kept kosher, so he didn't kill any pigs. <laughs> wow, <So. laughs> that's what Josephus said. Yeah, I think it was just oh, man. Josephus was a joker. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's keep going. I'm going to march straight into his court, and I'm going to tell him to his face. My followers will love it. You do know how that's going to end, don't you? I get arrested all the time. It's what <laughs> Reddit is doing. He's bold. He I'll is. be fine. Herod is afraid of me. The people hold me to be a prophet. Some say Elijah himself. <laughs> Maybe not the Elijah, but huh? we both know of the Elijah-ness of your Lord. The Elijahness. Because I'm. Is that a verb? You just said Elijahness. <laughs> I've well, used I've used words like that. Yeah, you know, with you just put ness at the end of something, and, it, and it, so okay. Do you know what? Make he's, good company. <laughs> he's presenting John as a little full of himself. He is a little uh, bit. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. I'm just... beginning to wonder why you're taking this so slow. Mm. Why you're always running away after performing miracles? Mm. Tell me. Why do you always go off to these desolate places? I need solitude. I'm working on something. A sermon. Mm. A big one. Ooh. Ooh. You're the planning type. Mm. I always say the first thing that comes to my mind. I, I, I always say the first thing that comes to my mind. That was really funny. I was going to make a side note on the difference between solitude and isolation. Mm. Because solitude and isolation are two very different things. Mm. Even Dietrich Bonhoeffer talks about this. Mm. But but that's one thing that Yeshua did well mm. is that he was in and among the people and his disciples, but he knew when he had to get away and be with his father, mm. that, which is an isolationism. That's solitude. Wow, that's I good. think Bonhoeffer puts it, it, let him who cannot be alone beware of community and let him who cannot be in community beware of being alone. Wow. Yeah. Bonhoeffer was amazing. He was amazing. I love him. Wow. And speaking of martyr, we had another martyr. Mm -hmm. I mean, John. He's right. A zealot and a martyr. Yep. Wow. Okay. In preaching and in life. Yes, I remember from the time you started talking. And I heard about that brood of vipers coming. <laughs> that was classy. <laughs> Do you know how the poets say vipers are born? Yes, they hatch inside their mothers and eat their way out, mm. killing their mothers in the process. I thought it was a pretty good line. Yes, <laughs> but no one wants to be accused of killing their ima. Yeah, I'm not here wow. to make friends with wow. religious leader. 
It's interesting. This is a, 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 about the Vruta Vipers comment. Uh -huh. So in extra biblical writings, Jewish writings, it actually was common for them to refer to each other when they're having heated discussion, they call them polemics, mm -hmm. uh, calling each other snakes. Really? That was, huh. it's kind of like when you're family, you know, you, you say things a little more heated than you mm -hmm. do with, you know, strangers or right. quasi friends. And so this whole brood of vipers, because uh, even Yeshua has some harsh words at times as well, Definitely. you know. Yeah. So, but it's just a family, mm -hmm. inner family uh, discussion, right. debate, you know, about how should you, this discussion even here, what is their relationship to the law of Moses? You know, mm -hmm. how is this to be understood? This was the big debate. We talked about Sabbath in our previous uh, reaction video. And it was, okay, how right. do we follow the Sabbath? That was the big debate uh, in all these different commandments. Mm -hmm. And then Yeshua's bringing this whole new element, the new covenant, the breaking into the kingdom, you know, all right. this heaven coming to earth and him. And like, so this is a, a big shift in, in uh new revelation right right well he's working on a really big teaching he just <laughs> said it he did <laughs> that was hilarious that was really funny for like eternity past yeah <laughs> he's been working on it for a long long time. time and judging by that stunt you pulled on the sabbath neither are you whoa are you really going to be nice to these people i suppose not hmm Just be careful. Mm. Now is not the time to be careful. 30 years you've been here. David was a shepherd and in the wilderness and on the run for 30 years before he became king. Yes, and then he ruled for 40 years. He killed a bunch of people, made horrible mistakes, and then he died in bed with a teenager. He was not married to. <laughs> Even not the best That's analogy, about it. but also <laughs> she was there to keep him warm. I know. <laughs> did you, did well, you hear him defending him? That was, inter that was really interesting. He was there to keep him warm. <laughs> <laughs> it did. The, the, the text does say that he didn't touch That's true. the gal. It does say that. It does say that. That was a really brilliantly written summary. It was of David's, David's life, <laughs> but in a very, very negative perspective. I think. Right. I right. think I could see where he's squirming. She was squirming right, like, a little. Bit. Oh. Well, you know, this is our relative. That, right? th that's one way to say it. But he's like, he is the greater son of David for a reason. You yeah. know? Yeah. So there is a reason that he had the covenant, the Davidic covenant mm -hmm. uh, was made with him. But that this is, this I mean, is good. John's like, come on, man. Like, yeah. let's get this party he's started. He's fiery. Right. He's fiery. There are certain flavors in the family of Messiah like this are just fire for sure you know and we for need sure. this, this is, absolutely they're called the prophets well and that's it's interesting I mean like you know Simon is kind of like that Simon the Zealot's probably kind of like that and so we're getting all of these different flavors around Yeshua right, right? Yeah. and we're one thing I love about this show is that it brings these guys just so humanly into right. your minds so, you know and so that's this is it just makes it more fun that they're so the chosen that's their specialty it's super is good. it bringing the humanity and look here we are two thousand years later mm -hmm. and we still is this wrestle between the prophets mm -hmm. right and how do we allow the prophets but they stir things up so then the pastors the shepherds like whoa right. stay over here but we need them as a part of the congregation keep us moving keep and us yet, moving. It's, that yeah. makes the, you can't have everything just in order and right <laughs> so but then the prophets don't really want to be here they want to do their own thing so it's like this whole thing where we all need each other we actually. definitely all need each other so for sure all right let's keep going i know i mean i know what you mean but what i'm saying is taking all this time telling all these stories i must confess i'm eager for you to get to the point <laughs> very prophet Look, right i'm going to tell stories that make sense to some people but not to others. And that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> a teacher. What a teacher. I get it. It's not like I'm preaching stories for children either. It's becoming real, isn't it? Hmm. Everything we've prepared for. It is. Wow. 
I mean, it's always been real, but it's one thing to preach about it. To hear my Abba's prophecy growing up mm. and your Ima's song. Mm. <laughs> Imagine that context. But it's heavy when it becomes real. Mm-hmm. Wow. No? It's true. Do you feel ready? Can you imagine? I'm always ready to do my father's way. But that doesn't make it easy. Huh. Good. That's the truth. Listen. I was rude to you before. <laughs> but it's only because we go back so far and I can tease a bit. <laughs> I love it. But you know that my heart is yours. Hmm. My life is yours. The sole reason why I was miraculously conceived by two old people (laughs) was to pave the way for you. Wow. Can you imagine that? I'm just impatient (laughs) for you to get to work. What a strange life, right? Right? I mean, right? He, he like, knows that about himself. Hearing the prophecies growing up. Man. You have done God's work. Albeit in a unique way. <laughs> Guilty as charged. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perhaps a poor choice of words. Perhaps. Wow. <laughs> that was an incredible scene. What if you were Yeshua's cousin? <laughs> I mean, that, that would be like, what? What? I'm here to serve you. I mean, it's different than the mom. I mean, I'm a guy, so right. the harder to relate to his mother or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But his cousin or, you know, his friend his growing brothers, up. Even. We were neighbors. Right. You know, or something. <laughs> like, that's like, what? Like this. Oh, man. That's God? It, you know? Like, I don't know. That's pretty cool, mm-hmm. but also so bizarre so bizarre I, I like i love the the context that that they just painted to even john hearing his father's stories like these prophetic words that were spoken about him like what he is designed to do living with that and then being at this point in time and place in history like you, you just you can't even imagine it mm-hmm. you can't even imagine it and like i love that they captured like the friend of the bridegroom message right here that, mm. that, that John says, you know, it's, it's, it's the joy of the friend of the bridegroom when the bridegroom comes, that, good. that, that context, That's you good. know? That's and good. it's like, you're seeing that, like my life is right. yours, which is one of the things, right. things I love about John. And, and as you were saying that, as we get toward the end of this age mm-hmm. and his return, right. I think it's going to be the same way. Right. I mean, some people are saying that we're seeing some birth pangs right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know if they're birth pangs. I think it may be morning sickness. <laughs> but but my wife says I can't say that because I don't really know what morning sickness is. But Sympathy pain. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's going to be the same way. It's like we're, we're looking at the book of Revelation mm-hmm. and Zechariah and Joel. And we're like, I mean, if it's not us, you know, it's... And the right. not so distant future. It's like this is happening. That's what he's saying. We're, this is coming to life right now. Right. Right. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Next one. What was that? I don't know. Uh oh. Flashback. She can sense something. Right. Oh, it's the demon guy. Right. She's like, I know that. Did you? I heard that. I love those two together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He grabs the spoon. Heavy drama. Wow. That was good. Again, the, the human side of the disciples, right? It's on all of you, but worse. Putrid. Don't come any closer. That's awesome. Love that. 
Stop. Hey. Lilith. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't answer to that name. Mm, they told me about you. Did they? All seven of them. So they're trying to intimidate so. Right. My name is Mary. Mm -hmm. It was always Mary. Oh, the stories they had. You're scared. They are. They're doing a good job of painting the spiritual like warfare context. She's too. stepping forward. She's like, not afraid at all. Spawn of Oriax, fifth night of Legion. What's your real name? Hmm. That smell. It's on all of you. What did your mother call you? Hmm. <laughs> Can't say. <laughs> wow. Please say your name. Your name. <laughs> oh, so Simon. Simon's here. Please. They're not backing down no. to uh, the controversy, are they? <laughs> They're going straight for demons, right? <laughs> Interesting that oh, this is this zealot. Whoa! That was a running deliverance. That was amazing. Right? All he said was out, out of him. You see that? Oh my gosh, that's so good. Yeah! <laughs> yes. Yeah! Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm glad they're portraying though the spiritual warfare. Oh my gosh, yes. And this is great. This is I mean, so good. This is so Try real. It. They are avoiding the reality of the gospel of Yeshua. The deliverance is real. Mm. I know. It seemed like it would never end. Mm. Wow. Mm. What is your name? Caleb. Caleb. Well, it's over now. Wow. Mm. That was intense. That was so intense. That was intense. Woo! But it's so good. It's this, wow, this kingdom breaking in. Yep. When the king shows up, Yeah. the son of God shows up. Yeah. Eh, this is warfare. I mean, the waters the game are stirring, is on. man. The waters are stirring. It's game on. I just got to say, like, chosen guys, way to go. Well done. <laughs> way to go. That was intense. Right. It was so good. Let's go. Let's just keep moving. An appeal is pointless. Nicodemus is too powerful. It's not an appeal. Okay. What said he's member who take up our fight against a fellow member? Is that Shmuel? Mm -hmm. You're okay. thinking it's too small. Well, what then? Go to Caiaphas directly? Shmuel, there are two schools of missionary thought. Hillel and Shammai, of course, but what does that have to do? And when there is an issue presented to the Sanhedrin that could be interpreted two ways, the court... splits. <laughs> There's still a rube. So this is interesting. They're bringing up the two main rabbinic mm -hmm. schools of thought in the first century, the school of Hillel and the school of Shammai. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of fun that they're bringing this in. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can thank Rabbi uh, Jason Sobel. Jason Sobel, maybe. I, I'm not sure who helped <laughs> right. them out here, who right. is actually a friend. He's mm -hmm. awesome, and he's a consultant on The, mm -hmm. the Chosen. But Hillel, the school of Hillel, actually Yeshua weighs in in agreement with the mm -hmm. Pharisaic school of Hillel. Right. Most of the time, and only, and they're actually more lenient than the school of Shammai. Mm. So this is. This and by is, lenient, you mean like Torah or like oral law lenient? Is that what you mean? Yeah, like strict. Okay. For like, uh, for example, uh, Hillel said that you could. Uh, divorce your wife for any reason if she was a bad cook 
Hmm. Okay, so they're real lenient on oh, wow. the law. <laughs> hmm. Ex but then Shammai, actually on this particular one, on divorce, y Yeshua weighed in with Shammai, right. which is you couldn't do right, that. for sure. So, but they're both Pharisaic schools, which is interesting because the Pharisees a lot of times get portrayed as these evil bad guys. Mm -hmm. And yet the Pharisaic school was the closest identification of, Yesh of Yeshua's school of thought. Interesting. So, and then of course we have Paul, mm -hmm. the apostle, Rav Shaul, mm -hmm. and he was what? It says in the text, a Pharisee of Pharisees. Right. And he wrote most of the New Testament. <laughs> right. 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 So, it, although they, mm -hmm. they didn't always love Yeshua, he's debating this as an inner family dialogue right. discussion on how should we follow the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. But he still connects mainly with the Pharisees. That's an interesting point. Yeah. So anyway, I'm glad they're bringing up For sure. uh, Hillel and Shammai here. We might get a little more in the story. When the court splits along Mishnaic traditions, it becomes political. Former allies become enemies. We can turn people against Nicodemus. Maybe. But the right issues, especially those that appeal to emotion, can be political gold. False prophecy is a moral imperative. <laughs> to you. And if we can make it emotional as well, you may find we don't even have to seek those who oppose Nicodemus. Hmm. Nicodemus himself may have a change of heart. What do we have to do? Most Sanhedrin members follow the teachings of who? Shammai. Exactly. <laughs> ah, and he's the most rigid interpreter of doctrine the Sanhedrin has known. This what is exactly you how you're learning. You can get this to him? That's not the hard part. Our part is getting him to make it a priority. But if he understands the crime... He's got no political weight. Here's what's important to Shammai right now. So, the other interesting thing is that... Uh, I'm fast-forwarding now to today mm -hmm. because people are real familiar with rabbinic Judaism today and wearing black and white. Sure. And, you know, when you look at the Western Wailing Wall, there'll be, you got, like... Mm -hmm. Religious Jews usually are presented, there are many different types of religious Jews. That's mm -hmm. one uh, ultra-Orthodox uh, Judaism. But Rabbinic Judaism actually comes out of the school of Hillel. Hmm. So they're actually, uh, Hillel was, they were Pharisees, like I was saying. Mm -hmm. And then Rabbinic Judaism came out of this school of Pharisees. So Shammai is stricter, uh, but Rabbinic Judaism actually comes out of this uh, less strict. They're still strict in some sense. Sure. Uh, meaning they care about the law and how to apply the law. Uh, but there, you could see here, they're trying to show you some of the corruption right. within the Sanhedrin and the different leaders and could we influence them? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is part of the corruption that we all know is a part of the Jewish leadership in the first century as right. well. Right. So they're, they're presenting that. Right. He's in a dogfight with Sanhedrin President Shimon, the son of Hillel, who is the more tolerant teacher, Shammai's opposite school of thought. Shammai has the votes in the Sanhedrin, yes. But Shimon has the common people because he's Hillel's son. Hmm. Shammai wants the people. And Shimon wants the votes. And he, he, he's right, Hillel himself, he's talking about the son of Hillel, mm -hmm. but Hillel himself was uh, a commoner and so mm. this is kind of it they've done their their homework here which is really cool uh the sanhedrin's also has sadducees right involved i don't know if they're going to get into that uh so it's it's a mixture here but this mm. is interesting kind of getting i like how they're just getting into the inner political mm -hmm. dialogue and Teasing wrestle the of the sanhedrin itself that carried so much power and weight sure. right in the first century yeah and, and it's like a i mean it's their judicial branch right mm -hmm. like in the Supreme think about, Court yeah you think about Paul and John and Stephen these are the guys that were going they were going before right. when they were having to defend what they were doing mm -hmm. these were the guys right? right so just a little even just biblical context there right. too so if we could offer Shimon a way to beat Shammai that's his own rigid game we pit the school of Hillel against the school of Shammai. Politics. So you're writing a letter to Shimon? Shimon is too busy to read our letter. 
This personal scribe, however, is an old friend. He will have the time and Shimon's ear when the opportunity comes. Politics. Mm -hmm. Jesse gave us so little information. Mm. It's not entirely his fault. The man vanished after the miracle. That's his pattern. Nicodemus himself was struck by the same curiosity. Mm. He performs miracles discreetly and vanishes. What else do you remember from Capernaum? A woman on the roof. An Ethiopian who referred to an incident with a leper outside the city. Mm. I can go back to Capernaum and look for her. Excellent. If the case is reopened, it will have the full weight of the Sanhedrin behind it. <laughs> there can't be too many Ethiopian women in Galilean backwater towns. That's my home. <laughs> cousin. Oops. Oops. He said he was going to see his cousin. Jesse wasn't clear on that detail. Yeah, but it's something. We can search the census records for relations. The population of Nazareth is so small, he will be easy to find. We can identify his father, mother, and the relatives. Mm. This is the census year. And the numbers aren't in yet. How old did he seem? 30s, early 40s. He must have been old enough to have been counted in that last census. Check on it yourself. Don't draw attention. That's, he's right about mm -hmm. the, the towns not being so big. Mm -hmm. So Nazareth, you know, wasn't like this metropolis. Sure. There's not tens of thousands of people. I can't mm -hmm. remember the exact number, but I want to say six or seven thousand small. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Bethlehem. All right, let's finish the clip. We're almost done. In the meantime, we need to regret the events. Ugh. Shammai, Shimon, Shmuel. Our people really need a better variety of names. Oh. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was really funny. That's hilarious. That was really funny. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, Shemuel is trying to build a case right. against this miracle worker, false teacher. Mm -hmm. He's really passionate about this. Right. It's, they're, I think they're, they're doing such a good job. They're building the drama. Yeah. They're building the drama. He talked about why would they still not believe he's the Messiah if he, they know he's doing miracles. For Shemuel here is that he, like there's this zealousy for the law mm -hmm. that goes too far, mm. right? And and you end up like blinding you, mm. and this is called legalism, right? right? Where it's just you're just so into mm -hmm. the the letter of the law, you can't see Yeshua when he shows up, and I mean that's Yeshua's biggest critique, right? right? Right. Is that that if you I, you had Moses, but if you believed Moses, he says mm -hmm. you would believe me, right? Right. So, like, they're not truly following Moses mm. or when he came. Right. Because he is the son of Abraham right. also. Right? It's, you almost, it's like they portrayed it. You almost see a little bit of that in John as well. You know, this these expectations and right. what yeah, know, that's true. what's the point. So the expectations are being shifted a little bit. So even... But I, I will say that, like... The relationship with John mm -hmm. and Yeshua, that might be my favorite. Just bringing <laughs> John more alive. Right. Like he's such a, a unique character and his we know his birth story. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, he's he's such an important part of, of the scriptures. Yeah, for and sure. Preparing the way of the Lord, right. making straight the path in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, come on, this this that was my favorite part so of it. So good. Yeah, I love I love the development of the character John. It's super fun. I can't can't wait to like get on the other side and be like, John, how, how close was that to you? <laughs> right. <laughs> was that, I mean, beard, right. was that similar, right. you know? <laughs> was Crazy John, what did they call him in the early Creepy episode? John. Creepy, Creepy John. John. My kids quote that. Mine they, too. Creepy John said something about your sandals or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, my kids are saying that. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, great episode. We look forward to watching the whole thing. Yep. Some of you asked also about when we went back and watched the full episode of... Episode 4. Episode 4, what yeah. we thought about it. So, Sam, what do you think when you sat down and watched oh, the whole thing last time? Oh, man. I, it, was, it was really fun to see the progression of Simon the Zealot mm. and the transformation of Simon the Zealot from... You know, I mean, he, obviously, he had this messianic expectation throughout his entire life, and then he sees his brother get good, healed. That right. last moment was just incredible everything they did with that i was just like oh it's so good you know yes there's mm -hmm. some imaginative liberties taken there but who cares it was great <laughs>
Yeah. I agree. Like that storyline, mm-hmm. they brought you in. I'm glad we got to see the whole yeah, thing. Me too. Me too. And they did such a great job, mm-hmm. and having him be related to the man who gets fun. healed at Bethesda, was that was really special. Mm-hmm. But then the story where he comes in and he sees his brother walking, and so he doesn't murder that guy. I mean. This is amazing. That was so good. the writing is so, so good, yep. and they just bring you into the story. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll never read that story, at the Pool right. of Bethesda, the same way again. Right? It's so human. Yep. Uh, it's so real, and even the zealots—they're getting you into the zealots. Mm-hmm. I really love that because that's a big, big part of the historical context in the first mm-hmm. century. Yeah. And so this is why the Romans are crushing them a lot because mm-hmm. you have these zealot groups that right. rise up. This is why the temple gets destroyed in 70 A.D. was yeah. because of the zealots. Yeah. So I love that they portrayed and got into the zealots some. Right. Me this too. is so much a part of the story of what's mm-hmm. really happening in the mm-hmm. Gospels. Mm-hmm. So fantastic. Episode. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you, Chosen. Yeah. You guys are doing a great so job. Good. You're not watching this, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I majored in air drumming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you about I'm ready? Minored in it. Yeah. Just we're waiting on you. I'm so <laughs>